You guys made it. You made it to your very last project of the semester, the color wheel. I am so excited for you guys. I know this has been a crazy semester, believe me, I know, with all its bumps and ups and downs, but hey, you're here. And so let's jump right in and learn about how color works. So here we have a quote by Vincent Van Gogh, and it goes, one can speak poetry just by arranging colors well. And that's basically the goal of this whole project is to test you and arranging colors and values well. So let's talk about some terms and definitions. So the first one we have is hue, and that is just a term used to name a color. For example, apples are red, the sky is blue. Here we have three circles with different variances of red, and we can see that the one on the right is the purest and brightest version of red. Now, if we were to lighten that original color with, let's say, white, it would become a tint. However, if we darken that original color, by maybe adding black to it, it would be considered a shade. When we say saturation, we're talking about the intensity of that color or the pureness of that color. Generally, the maximum intensity of any given color is when it comes straight out of the paint tube. Here we have three circles and the one on the far left we would say is the most saturated or the most intense. In this case, definitely the most pure form of yellow. The two to the right gradually get darker and we could say that the one on the far right is definitely the least saturated of these three colors. Now you already know that value is the lightness or darkness of a color. Keep in mind that the most saturated swatch is not always the darkest value. Here we see our orange swatch and it's definitely the most saturated out of these four swatches, but it's definitely not the darkest. The two swatches to the right of the pure orange are significantly darker. Let's talk about color. First, we have our primary colors, and those are colors that cannot be created by any other color mixture. These colors are yellow, red, and blue. Next, we have our secondary colors, and these are colors that are created by mixing two primary colors. So blue and yellow makes green, yellow and red makes orange, and red and blue makes purple. These would be your secondary colors. Your intermediate colors are created by mixing a primary with a secondary color. For example, yellow-orange. So if I mix yellow with orange, I'm going to get something in between to make more of a yellowy orange. Analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Here we see green, green-yellow, and yellow side by side. They all have something similar, so they can be compared to each other in terms of color, making them analogous colors. Complementary colors are two colors that are directly across from each other on the color wheel. Complementary colors are used often in design because they work so well with each other. My favorite example of complementary colors would be the Detroit Tigers. Their colors are blue and orange and it's the bright saturated blue and orange and it works really well together. So let's talk about your project specifications. You are going to recreate this design that you see on the right. It will be on a 14 inch by 14 inch Bristol board. Yellow is vertical. So notice how the yellow is at the very top pointing up. Make sure you have your yellow in the right spot. It must follow the same color progression, which means yellow at the top, purple at the bottom, orange and red on the right, and blue and green on the left. For your primary and secondary hues, keep in mind that the pure color will be on the outside. What we mean by pure color is that for your diamonds, you're going to paint the straight color that you get that comes out of the tube and use that for your diamond shapes. Underneath your pure color, you will have five values under it. The lightest value will be on the outside and the darkest shade will be towards the middle. Your intermediate colors, so for this example, blue-green, are placed in between the primary and secondary colors. You must use the value finder for this project. For your first value, it should be off-white with just a tint of the color. So yes, it will be light, but it must be obvious what color family it belongs to. You will paint swatches for all the even numbers on the value finder for a total of five value swatches. Here is an example of a past project done by a student, and there are some things we can learn from this. Notice how these two middle yellow values are too close together. Just like with your black and white value study, you're going to want to make sure that all your values are obviously different from each other. Now here at the bottom, we have all our dark values together, but notice how the value for the yellow and the value for the blue are significantly different. The blue one is definitely darker compared to the yellow one, even though they're supposed to be in the same value family. It's not enough that the value you have matches your value scale, they must also match the values within the other color families. To help you out, identify the value of the pure color at the beginning so you know approximately how many swatches will need white or black added to them. For example, since yellow is a very light color, only one swatch will have some white added to it. 
And since pure purple is a very dark value, you won't need to add black to any of the other swatches. Your darkest swatch will probably even need a bit of white added to it. To help you out, we've made a diagram to show you where your swatches need to go. There is two inches from the top of the pure color swatch and the edge of the bristle board. The pure color swatch is a one inch by one inch square turned to be a diamond. All your other swatches are a half inch by one inch. This includes your intermediate and all your value swatches. Center the intermediate colors between the primary and secondary values. Keep placement consistent throughout. So our recommendation is that you lay down your yellow and purple swatches first, since the yellow and purple swatches are the only ones that will line up exactly two inches from the edge of the bristle board. Once you have those set, do your best to place the orange, red, blue, and green swatches evenly surrounding them. And once those are in place, go ahead and add your intermediate swatches into the center of each of those primary and secondary values. After you've laid down your pure color swatch, go ahead and start adding the five value swatches beneath that. The first value piece on the top and bottom starts three and a half inches from the outer edge of the bristle board. Notice how your five values are placed side by side and staggered. The next piece will start halfway down from the previous piece. So first you have your light value on the outside, then your next value will start halfway down and on the side of the first value, then your third value will align with the bottom of the first value and should also align with halfway down from the second value. Each spoke should be evenly spaced. Here we have an example of a project where it is not even. Notice how the center of the yellow and purple align perfectly vertically with the center spoke and the intermediate colors of blue, green, and orange, red align perfectly horizontally on the center of that middle spoke. This will help you find your center alignment first, and it will also help you place all the other spokes. So make sure they are spaced evenly throughout. Here are a few painting tips for you. For yellow, you're going to want to use purple to darken, not black. Black tends to have a bit of blue in it. And when you mix blue with yellow, you get green. So if you use black, it's gonna turn your yellow more green. By using purple, which is yellow's complementary color, you'll be able to darken yellow while still keeping the color somewhat pure. White and black should not be in the same mix. So for example, if you had a blue swatch and you made it too light because you added too much white to it, you would not add black to it to make it darker. Instead, you would add more blue to it to make it darker. If white and black is mixed with the same color swatch, it'll gray down your value color. I want to talk about the PDF that I sent you guys through announcements one more time, just to make sure we're on the same page in terms of checking values. Here we see three different value swatches, and yes, they are all different. However, notice how the two on the right are very similar in terms of value. When I squint down, I can see that the one on the left and the middle swatch do not blend. The jump is too hard and one of the swatches has to be adjusted for this to work. Whereas the middle swatch and the right swatch are too similar and the jump isn't obvious enough. Now let's compare that to this next slide. Here we can see that we did not change all three swatches. Because the jump was too harsh on the left and too similar on the right, all we had to do was darken the middle swatch. Here we can see both sets of swatches now being compared to each other. And now we can see a more distinct jump in values between the three swatches on the bottom compared to the ones on the top. Don't forget, it is not enough that the values are accurate. They must also be distinct from each other. I hope you're looking forward to this color wheel project. It's one of my favorites of the semester. Pay very close attention to the project specifications and you'll do fine.